Good morning. Who can say no to Dr. Cora Claudio? Even if it's a full pack budget day, because our budget hearings start at 9 a.m. Um, Secretary De La Peña knows that as chair of the Finance Committee, from 9 a.m. up to past 10 p.m. every day, we have our budget hearings. And I told her, and you can check my schedule, at 1 p.m. it's the uh, budget of the National Security Council and the Office of the Vice President. So uh, apologies if I can't listen to all the inspirational messages. I would have loved to stay here uh, the longer time or for the whole program because first I share with Dr. Claudio and all of you present here today, Secretary de la Peña, Mel, our friends from the Philippine Navy, our friends from towns and uh, of course uh, the first climatologist of the Philippines, uh, Sunny and Cecile and all of you present here. I would want to look at each and every structure, map, video, uh, uh, for, of this mobile museum, especially since this is the declared man month, marine and archipelagic month. You're correct, Cora, in your uh, column today, was it yesterday, that not much interest or awareness was raised despite the fact that it was declared last year as the marine and archipelagic month. Considering that the Philippines is an archipelago of thousands of islands and islands and shoals, considering that the contested waters is so important to our country in the West Philippine Sea, and considering that we've just claimed officially Ben Rice a few years ago, and that the center of the center of marine biodiversity is found in the Philippines. And so we must really take care of our waters. I believe that there are 1,000 19 inland rivers and lakes. No, inland rivers, just the rivers, if I'm correct. 1019, that's what I understand from the DNR. But aside from that, imagine, I don't have the exact figures, of the 45,000 barangays, how many barangays are actually coastal? I asked this of the Coast Guard, uh, not yet the Navy, uh, during the hearing, and I asked them, how do we actually protect all these thousands of barangays apart from, we belong to municipalities all over the country. It's so difficult to protect it. Protect it against insurgents, against terrorism, and against natural hazards. And what are the natural hazards? We know all of that. Just now, Pag-asa keeps on texting their uh, warnings of another super typhoon coming, super typhoon Paeg. It's more than 20 natural hazards or typhoons in 12 months in a year as we know it's getting more intense it's getting more frequent and if we don't prepare ourselves the hazardous effects or the adverse impacts to extreme weather events and climate sunny knows this very well will become worse and worse and so generating awareness on our marine and archipelagic nation is of utmost importance. And so that's a reason why I'm here today. Uh, we know that we are one of the top polluters, plastic polluters in the world. If I'm not mistaken, that's 2.7 million metric tons of plastic trash given by this archipelago called the Philippines. We are not supposed to be proud of that, that we are the top three plastic trasher in the world. <laughs> But when you think about it, why does it have to be that way? We cannot justify it because we're all water around us and so plastic is thrown. No, that's not the justification. It's also not the justification that we're over 105 million people. No, because if you actually implement Republic Act 9003, I wish you could write about this in your column, which is the law I authored for my first term. Yes, 20 years ago. That's the Ecological Solid Waste Management Law, where you institutionalize the segregation of waste at source, recycling, and composting. I do it in my home. I do it in my office. I do it in my little, little farm. It's doable. If every barangay, if every sitio, if every home would segregate garbage, nabubulok, organic food waste with twigs, leaves, etc., Biodegradable, bote, lata, plastic. Paper waste, 
we don't have to crumble it because even if it's back and forth, we can actually recycle and sell it. And those that don't belong to the three are the residual waste or lata. Plastics can be reused or those that cannot be used go to residual. There are barangays like Barangay Potrero in Malabon that have at least 80% diversion waste where only 20% goes to lata. And if all our LGUs and barangays follow this law strictly, we will have less that would go into environmental sanitary landfills and no waste should go to our waterways, our rivers, our lakes, and our oceans. So why do we allow plastics, bottles, etc., to be thrown into our waters? I think that's where the Coast Guard and the Navy and all local governments, if every coastal barangay would watch its backyard, meaning not just the land, but its waters across it, and to make sure that each and every sitio, rock or resident does not throw plastic trash in its waters and beaches, then perhaps we would not be the top three plastic trash source in the world. Apart from plastic trash, which we see, Mel has a yacht. He knows what I mean. He's from that affluent place called Punta Fuego in Asugu. But despite the fact that it's a beautiful place, we see it's a trash bin. <laughs> During summer or kung kailan man yung agos, sa mga malilinis na isla ay may mga plastic at dumi. And see what happened in Boracay. Uh, how we've really mismanaged and destroyed our natural wealth. And so, generating awareness for the marine and archipelagic nation that is the Philippines is so important. I am one with you in protecting our waters. Water is a source of life. And apart from trash, what else are the other stresses to our marine ecosystem? There's ocean acidification. Dr. Claudio can speak about that better. Uh, the changes in climate really affects all the coral reefs, which are the homes of our fish, and it takes years upon years, if not decades, to protect and for our fish to repopulate. Um, and it would, be, it would be worse if our coral reefs are not protected. The importance of mangroves is also very one important protection for a marine ecosystem. But what happens in other jurisdictions? They recklessly cut our mangroves. Well, first because of poverty, sometimes because of greed, and um, third because of apathy and perhaps lack of wisdom or awareness that mangroves are actually the best buffer against storm surge. We know very well that during Yolanda, what happened? Those LGUs that had thick mangrove cover were actually protected from the storm surge that happened. And so I really believe that if all coastal barangays would be enlightened, sensitized, given that educational awareness of the importance of first, preserving their mangroves, second, not destroying uh, all the natural protection in their beach areas, coastal areas, third, not throwing any single pit of plastic waste into our oceans and four protecting our coral reefs because yet ang bahay ng isda then i think and i know that our fisher folks would have more catch for the day and we could have better uh, marine ecosystem that could bring rural livelihoods and domestic and foreign tourism and so on this month's end of ban i hope that we would continue to celebrate our marine resources because our marine resources is what gives life to most, if not all, Filipinos. I join you and congratulate the organizers, uh, Dr. Claudio and, uh, and all the sponsors of this mobile exhibit, which I believe will go to different malls for the public to see and to be educated. Uh, I would also like to uh, lend you, or not lend you, give you, I'll ask my staff to send you a soft and hard copy 
of a documentary series that was uh, directed by, Doc, by uh, Brillante Mendoza, the Cannes Best Director. Uh, it covers both terrestrial and marine. But I think the protected areas of the Philippines could be a good addition. You have your Samsung, Samsung or your Sony sponsors for television. So I'm asking my staff now who just keeps on taking notes there, okay, to give them a uh, USB or a hard drive of all the protected areas documentaries that we produced with uh, Brillante Mendoza. It's actually funded by DENR for the past few years and it was aired briefly on ANC television, but it's for the public and the Filipino people and the world to see. So on this occasion, I thank you for having me here uh, just for a brief time. I apologize, I can't stay for the whole program, but this will be a continuing engagement uh, with Dr. Claudio and her whole team so that the awareness for the protection, conservation, and propagation of our marine ecosystem will not just be 30 days in 365 days, but will be an everyday, an everyday paradigm shift in the way we live, in the way we utilize our resources, in the way we take care of our God-given gifts. And so I would end my brief message today by requesting our ever brilliant friend, Dr. Claudio, to give me interventions in the budget, special and general provisions to protect man. I have it already, but I don't have the monopoly of knowledge. So whatever important provisions that I can put under Coast Guard, that's the OTR, under the Navy, under the DND budget, under the OST, whether it's financial or um, provisions that they should follow, I would appreciate that. Because in the past three years, I've, as I've chaired the Finance Committee, I already mainstreamed climate and environmental provisions. Sometimes they say, what is she talking about? This is a finance document, but I've actually mainstreamed CCAM, DRR, Climate Change Adaptation Mitigation Disaster Risk Reduction in the national budget. But I would appreciate additional interventions for special provisions on the protection of our marine and archipelagic nation from Dr. Claudio. So that's what you get for inviting me. You have a homework to help me um, so that you can enhance our national budget. So thank you very much. Isan luti ang Pilipinas sa ating lahat at isang pagsusuportang masugit para sa ating blue economy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator.